Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Taylor and I'm a US American that's been living and working in Germany these past few years. If you follow my channel, you'll know that last week I posted a video on police in Germany versus police in the US and that was meant to be the first part of one longer video on the criminal justice system. But because the video was so long, I decided to split the videos into two parts. So last week, like I said, was the police, and this week is going to be more about the court system and the prison system. So the last few videos I've done have been really focused on racism and race in Germany versus the United States, and this is kind of I, probably one of the last parts that I'll do. And um, I just am really appreciative that you guys are taking the time to watch a video on a really important topic. I know that as a white person, I can only say so much and speak from kind of the resources that I've read or the resources that I've listened to, like podcasts, uh, documentaries, books that I've read, but I haven't experienced it myself. The racism that I have experienced as an Asian American is very different than uh, the racism that someone would receive if they had, for example, darker features, darker skin tones, and things like that. But uh, I do feel like I have a responsibility to speak to you guys so that we can help educate each other, not just me educating you guys, but I learn so much from everyone in the comments as well uh, that even though my platform is so small, I mean, I appreciate all 1,800 of you, but even though my platform is small, I still think it's a really important discussion that we should all be having, uh, not just now, not just because of the things that are happening in the United States and the protests that are happening across the world, but uh, regularly, you know, and until, I mean, I don't know if there will ever be a time where racism is completely fixed, but, you know, I just think it's a discussion that we should be continuing to have. So with that being said, here is the second part of the video um, from a few weeks ago that I filmed it, and I hope that you enjoy my content. If you do, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys next week, and in just enjoy the video, I guess. So moving on to the next topic is the court systems and the prison systems. So I'm actually going to focus mostly on prison systems, but I also just wanted to mention uh, some things about the United States court system that are very disturbing. There is a lot of questionable activity happening in the court systems, whether it is biased judges, whether it is prosecutors that overcharge. Overcharging is the act of piling on or tacking on different charges that a prosecutor, prosecutor knows that they can't actually win in order to force a person into agreeing to a plea bargain. Uh, so there are a bunch of different tactics that are used, uh, including very harsh punishments for black men specifically in comparison to white men happening in the United States. And again, I would refer to the book, The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. This is a great source and it has a ton of statistics. There's a ton of research that went into the book. I would recommend that you read that because they talk about the discrepancies of charges brought against white men and black men. Hey again, Future Taylor here. So I was just going through and watching my video and I realized that I missed a very important point that I wanted to make about jury selection and racism and discrimination within that process. For those of my international subscribers or those that don't know what jury selection is or what a jury is, it's just a group of individuals, of citizens that are selected from the public that are able to make decisions in certain cases. So I'll, I'll add actually a link that talks about this type of discrimination below by Vox. It'll be in my description box. But what I wanted to speak on is that through indirect discrimination because it's technically not allowed for um, those that choose juries to discriminate based on sex or race but through indirect discrimination it is possible to create white all white or nearly all white juries what this ends up doing there are statistics that show that all white or nearly all white juries are more likely to deliberate on cases of black men and women less time and that they are more likely to agree to harsher sentences such as, for example, the death sentence. So obviously having a jury that does not reflect the community has an influence on the verdicts of these cases. So another big difference that I wanna talk about before I get into the prison system is what are the goals of the prison system? So, I mean, you think in your mind, oh, of course the goal is to separate a dangerous person from the rest of society and 
oh, you also want to punish them for their crimes. All of this makes sense, yes. And that's how the United States typically internalizes and thinks about their own prison system. They think prison time is meant to punish someone for a crime. I agree, if you commit a crime, you have to somehow be held accountable for that crime, including police officers. Germany goes a step further. They not only care about the punishment aspect of the criminal justice system, but they care about re-socialization and rehabilitation so that when prisoners are released from the system, they can re-enter society and are less likely to recommit a crime. The recidivism rate in the United States is very high. Another statistic, sorry. The United States has a recidivism rate, meaning the rate of reoffense after being released from prison of 44% within one year and 83% within nine years. Germany, from what I could see, doesn't have very um, the same type of statistics, so I can't do a direct comparison, but the rate of reoffense is much, much lower. Talking about the rate of recidivism is also very complex because it's not just that you aren't rehabilitating the person in prison, it's also what you're doing afterwards. The recidivism rate is also in direct correlation with community supervision that accompanies people after they've been released from prison. So you think parole and probation. And in the United States, it's just such an unfair system. I know that this is a fictional TV show, but I would go watch Orange is the New Black because I think they'd actually do a really great job of portraying what it's like for ex-convicts after they are released from the system. They are held to such high standards that are nearly impossible to meet. And a lot of the people that are actually put back in prison for breaking the rules of parole or probation are put there for minor infractions such as missing a meeting or not being able to pay the extraordinary fees that accompany parole or probation. So there's a lot of aspects that go, there are a lot of things that kind of set people up for failures and this disproportionately affects people of color. In terms of the total prison population, the United States has 655 people in prison per 100,000 in comparison to 77 people in Germany. Can you imagine that? The difference between those numbers? And it's not because Americans commit that much more crime. That's not what it is. Germany also focuses much more on larger crimes rather than prosecuting smaller crimes. So I actually will show you this image. I'm actually going to show you guys a graph and it's talking about the method of sanction that the two countries use, Germany and the United States. I think the Netherlands is also in there, but you can see that Germany utilizes fines and suspended sentences much more often than it uses actual incarceration. Whereas you can see in the United States, incarceration or prison sentences is the number one sanction that is used. The length of prison sentences is also something that's very different between the two countries. The United States has an average of three year prison sentence terms, whereas in Germany, 75% of prison sentences are for one year or less. So there's also very big difference in terms of the length of time someone is actually spending isolated from their communities. And like I've said, incarceration in Germany is also just used a lot less frequently, especially for nonviolent crimes. Okay, the last topic, there's so much to say on it and I know I have to be brief, but it's on the topic of the war on drugs that is found in the US. In the United States, one out of five people is in prison because of a drug offense. That's 500,000 people. You guys, I don't even know what 500,000 people looks like. My mind cannot comprehend how many people that is. And out of those 500,000 people, four fifths of them are there because of charges of possession. That means that they had it on them, whereas one fifth of them are in there for selling the drugs. So while the criminal justice system would like you to believe and the government would like you to believe that they're going after these big drug kingpins, you know, they're not. They're punishing people for consuming it. And, you know, whether you're doing it for leisure or whether you are addicted, addiction is a disease. It's not a choice. You, I really believe in the decriminalization of drug use because it helps no one to put people that are doing drugs in jail. It doesn't help. 
statistics and research proves that it does not help. So why are 500,000 people sitting in the US prison system right now? And how many of those are in the prison system because of weed, which is being legalized in many different states and in many different countries? The thought is just mind blowing and it's something that you don't really see in the German system. When it comes to drugs, Germany really focuses on prosecuting people that are involved with something bigger like drug trafficking rather than people that actually consume it. They also rely on harm reduction. So they look at prevention and treatment if you are suffering from a drug addiction rather than putting someone in a cell, having them detox and then having them relapse once they get out of prison. It just is a much different way of looking at the use of drugs. You guys, I forgot to mention something also really important. I'm gonna just talk about it briefly, but it's also the idea that prisons look a lot different in Germany. So in Germany, you have something called the principle of normalization. That means that the German government wants prisons to look and feel as much like a community as possible and like community communities that they could potentially be re-entering after they finish serving their term. And they give people quite a bit of freedom of personal choice in terms of the way that they dress, they can cook their own meals. Mothers have access to their children in a way that US prison systems don't allow to allow for bonding between them. And this also has a great influence on the rate of recidivism. So I just wanted to mention that. So there is a completely different philosophy behind the way that prison systems function in Germany. <sighs> okay, you guys, I have a feeling that wasn't as organized as I wanted it to be. This video is gonna be super long. I hope you watched it all. Like I said, I just wanna talk a little bit about what I've been doing these past few weeks since everything has come to a head. I have been doing a lot of self-reflection and I think that this is something that's very difficult as a white person to think about all the ways that I have been racist in the past, all of the racist beliefs that have been ingrained in me and to think about how I can deconstruct them. I've talked a little bit about this. I grew up in a rural, very white, not diverse town in uh, Wisconsin. I grew up with my two grandparents. They raised me and I don't want to call them out in this public platform, but I grew up hearing the N word. I've grown up hearing about how black people are lazy or every single negative stereotype that you could think. And it's, I haven't completely deconstructed all of that. And I know I need to take the time and put in this emotional effort to really deconstruct these notions that I have because they're wrong and they're damaging and they're hurtful and they influence my behavior. And I think that it's really important for all of us to sit with ourselves and sit with these feelings, acknowledge them and think about ways that we can deconstruct them. Uh, other things that I've been doing, I've been watching other influencers, what they have to say, and I am so appreciative of the people of color that are willing to talk about their experiences despite the trauma that they're having to relive, despite the emotional exhaustion that they're feeling to educate us. I am so grateful for that and I'm really taking advantage of that as well. I'll link some uh, influencers that you can go check out their work and their content and I hope that you can also learn something from them. I've also been reading, not just online, I've also purchased some books. I'll also post a link in the description of some of the books that you can buy that talk about the history of race or about white fragility or about the ways that we can be an ally to people of color. I hope that you guys all can learn with me that we can all grow that we can all be more supportive of the minority groups in our community and that we can really be true allies you know i thank you for watching this video please subscribe to my channel and let's have a discussion in the comments from my last video i read every single comment i tried to uh, respond to as many of them as i could but I love having a dialogue with you guys and I love sharing my feelings and learning more from all of you. Okay, I will see you guys next week. Stay safe, bye.